banana is the second most important crop in India next to man. So it's year round availability, affordability by different class of people, its varietal range, taste, nutritive and medicinal value makes it the most favorite fruit among all class of people. It has also good export potential. In India, India is one of the country that leads the old banana production with an annual output of about 14.2 million tons. In India, banana ranks first in production and third in area among the fruit crops grown. It accounts for about 13% of the total fruit crop area and the production contributes to 33%. However, the banana production in India is degraded by different biotic and abiotic stresses. Among the biotic stresses, the most important ones are the diseases that are caused by fungi, bacteria and viruses. So in this lecture, we will be discussing about different fungal diseases like Sigatoka disease, Panama disease or which is known as Fusarium wilt and we will be discussing about the bacterial diseases that is Moco or bacterial wilt and another bacterial disease known as Ervinia rhizome rod or Tipoa disease. And the most important diseases in banana are caused by viruses. So we have a number of viral diseases in banana. However, we will be discussing about the most important one. That is the bunchy top of banana, banana mosaic and banana brack mosaic. Let us discuss about the fungal de diseases in detail. The etiology or causal agent of the disease. We will be studying about the pathogen that is the disease cycle of the pathogen. We will be studying about the diagnostic symptoms. And finally we will be studying the management practices that need to be followed for the management of these diseases. Let us discuss the fungal diseases in detail. Among the fungal diseases, the most important one that affects the foliage is the Sigatoka disease. Do you know why this disease is known as Sigatoka? The disease was first reported in Java in 1902 and it has attained epidemic proportions in 1913 in Sigatoka Valley in Fiji. That's why the disease is known as Sigatoka. And you have two types of Sigatoka. One is known as yellow Sigatoka and the other one is known as black Sigatoka. The yellow Sigatoka is worldwide in distribution. However, it is absent from some countries like Canary Islands, Egypt and Israel. And in India, the yellow Sigatoka is very important and the black Sigatoka is not prevalent in India. It was not reported from India. In India, yellow Sigatoka is a serious threat to banana production in the states of Assam and the southern states like Tamil Nadu, Karnataka and Andhra Pradesh. Let us see the etiology of the pathogen. This pathogen is an Ascomyces fungus and it is capable of inciting yellow Sigatoka and black Sigatoka. The yellow Sigatoka is caused by the Ascomyces pathogen Mycospirilla musicola. So this is the perfect stage of the fungus. However, the imperfect stage is known as Pseudocercospora muse. And the black Sigatoka, which is also referred as black leaf streak, is caused by Mycospirilla physiensis. And the imperfect stage or area are the sexual stage is known as Pseudocercospora physiensis. Let us study about the pathogen. We know that the disease is caused by an Ascomyces fungus. So this pathogen is capable of producing Ascostroma in which the Ascospores are produced. So where this Ascostroma is produced during off season. So, this Ascostroma, which is the sexual floating body that is produced by Mycospirella musicola, is usually produced in the infected plant debris. So, the infection starts from the infected plant debris because the primary inoculum is given by 
the infected plant debris. So whenever there is moisture, the ascospores are liberated from the ascostroma and they are driven by wind and they will land on the host surface. So this, these ascospores which land on moist surface, they germinate and they enter into the leaf system through the stomata. So once the conditions are favorable for the pathogen, the pathogen produces the imperfect stage known as pseudocircospora music. So in its asexual stage, the pathogen is capable of producing conidia which are disseminated through wind as well as the rain splashes. That is, the secondary dissemination of the pathogen occurs through the conidia. So the surface moisture is required both for the liberation of ascospores as well as conidia. Hence, the disease is severe under moist conditions. So under what conditions the disease intensity or severity will increase? So the disease severity increases under high humid conditions. So from where these high humid conditions comes? Under field conditions. So this may be due to poor drainage that exists in the banana plantation, going for close planting or high density planting, where the humidity increases in the crop canopy or due to the existence of more suckers in a mat. Apart from this, the persistence of the dew on the leaf surface is also conducive for the disease development because we have studied that these ascospores or conidia they require moisture for the germination. So once the germination occurs, definitely the pathogen is capable of causing the disease. Sometimes, due to the lack of certain nutrient in the soil, the plants are predisposed to disease. Our farmers, mostly, they are habituated to give nitrogen to the soil, but they ignore about the potassium fertilization. So, whenever there is a deficiency of potassium in the soil, definitely the pathogen is capable to infect your host. Apart from this, as some of the farmers are cultivating susceptible cultivars like granine, dwarf cavendish and giant cavendish, they are easily susceptible to the pathogen. So let us see how to diagnose the disease. So this disease usually starts on the lower leaves because the pathogen is a necrotrophic pathogen. And the disease progresses from the lower leaves to the upper leaves. So what type of symptoms are produced initially? Initially the disease is seen as small reddish brown specks on the lower leaves and mostly these specks are concentrated towards the margins or the tips of the leaves. Do you know why these spots are mostly present at the margins or the tips of the leaves? Because the morning dew mostly accumulates at the margins and the tips of the leaves which is responsible for the germination of the conidia that land on the surface of the host. These specks increase in size and turn into spindle shaped spots. So what do you mean by spindle shaped spots? That is, the spots which are pointed at the tips but bulged at the center can be called as spindle shaped spots. So these specks increase in size, they attain spindle shaped spots with reddish brown margins and gray centers which are surrounded by an yellow halo. So the spots near the midrib, they increase and progress towards the margins, leading to the formation of a linear spotting. These spots, under favorable conditions, they combine or coils with each other, leading to the formation of a large necrotic area and the leaf appears dry. The infection becomes severe after bunch emergence because most of the sugars they are diverted to the bunch emergence hence the leaves are infected and most of the leaves are dried under favorable conditions. So what happens if the leaves are dried? This ultimately affects the size of the bunch. The fruits that are produced in the bunches of infected plants are underdeveloped and they may ripen prematurely. 
So let us see the management practices for this disease. So the management practices need to be devised based upon the favorable conditions for the disease. We know that the disease CVRT will be more under ill drain conditions. That's why always the banana need to be planted in well drained soils. And mostly this pathogen which is an ectotrophic pathogen it infects the susceptible varieties. Hence you need to grow moderately resistant varieties like Karpur Chakrakeli where the infection will be less. The plant density is also important because whenever you go for closer planting mostly the humidity in the crop can be increases thereby the disease increases. Hence you need to plant the bananas at recommended density that is usually thousand plants should be planted per acre and the disease in intensity also increases whenever there is overcrowding of the suckers in a mat. Hence the overcrowding of the suckers in the mat need to be reduced by pruning the suckers in the mat. And before spraying any chemical you need to remove and destroy the affected leaves as these affected leaves they serve as a source of inoculum from where the disease can be disseminated to the healthy plants and the healthy plants are infected. So after removal and destruction of the affected leaves it should be followed by spraying of boro mixture 1% along with linseed oil. We need to keep in mind if you want to spray any chemical for the management of Sigadoka leaf spot or banana, definitely the fungicide need to be mixed with a sticker. Because the surface of the leaf is slippery. So whatever fungicide you apply onto the foliage, it will trickle down. That's why always the fungicide need to be clubbed with a sticker so that the fungicide solution can attach to the surface of the leaf. And the disease can be managed by spraying both contact as well as systemic fungicides. The contact fungicides can be sprayed during pre-monsoon period. So the contact fungicides that can be used include mancozeb or chlorothalonil which can be sprayed at 2 grams per liter. But during the rainy season you need to spray the systemic fungicides like propiconazole at the rate of 1 ml per liter interspersed with tridimar 1 ml per liter at 20 days interval. So why you should go for alternation of chemicals? The alternation of chemicals is very very important because sometimes the use of the same chemical may lead to the resistant development in the pathogen. That's why you need to change the fungicides whenever you go for spraying for the management of the Sekatoka pathogen that is Mycospirella musicola.